masterminded, comes up towards the line, the top chaser in the country, and wins his second Queen Mother Champion chase. But it is Sprinter Sakura. They say they never come back. This is one of the great comebacks in the history of the Cheltenham Festival. And Sprinter Sakura is the champion again. Green Mother Champion Chase, God rest her soul. I know that's not the one that it's named after, but it's a fantastic race. Willie Mullins hadn't won it, had it? It was the last championship race that Charlie for him to go and win. And Nergamine won very, very well last year. Broke Shishkin by all accounts. He is, on the exchange, I've got the exchange price at the moment, he is in and around an even money poke. Like, there's not a weight of money on there, but you can get sort of 10 to 11-ish about him. If you were to look at the bookmaker's bets, Again, they're still non one and no bet for William Mills, four to six. But most of them are anti-post and no bet for six, five for Sean because it's championship races. He's about an eight to 11 poke. So 1.72 for your number of people out there. But you can get 1.9 of the exchanges. So I think it's just worth touching on that because as much as people might want to say, oh, he's too short, you can still get probably just shy of even money on an ergamine, which I think maybe changes the description. If you look at him as an even money poke or a four to six poke, Edward Stone second in command. 11 to 4 with Bet365. That's the non runner, no bet as well. Then we've got Blue Lord. We touched on him in the uh, very beginning video, the preview he won. But after that last performance, he probably will come here. Then we've got your Grenadines, your Editor the Geeks, your Nube Negras. It just doesn't bear talking about those horses, does it? So, Anergamine was obviously very good last year. I touched on that. He does look good again. Edward Stone's a horse I never really, I could just, I could just never really get that excited about. But that Tingle Creek effort was borderline phenomenal and I know what he did at the Desert Orchid chase where he unseated at the beginning he had unseated before as well I think it was in his very first chase or when he had like his um, first novice chase season because he was a second season novice last year but it's almost quite nice that he's sort of got that out of the way now because you see with these horses didn't you that they might just tip up every now and again I, I think the Tingle Creek run was really really good but I just don't know really know what he's beat and the fact that Anergamine won the champion chase last year as well as he did I would be hard pressed to go against an ergamine like I think he's probably quite a fair price but like I say I don't think I'll ever be able to look at Edward Stone with the right favourable eyes Daryl you were the same as me really on that like we didn't really give him the credit even though we both liked him when he was a novice hurdler I think it's Fiddler on the Roof he came up against I think you were at maybe Warwick that day and you saw him so Jamie you've been more fair to this horse I would say what do you what do you make of the champion chase do you think it is what it is it's a two horse race between ergamine and Edward Stone do you think the prices are about right um they probably are, Dave, on the base of last year's run, but you have to remember last year's run was in a monsoon. Um, mm. But <clears throat> the only thing at the back of my head, right, I know it was Kempton, it's a sharp track. Where Edward Stone's going to get away with it at Chetham, in my opinion, is that there's no real front runner now. I presume Editor Jajid is going to go in the champion chase now after winning the Desert Orchid. What In the back of my head, that the way how fast Editor, Editor Jajid w- ran that day mm-hmm. right is that it took him out of his comfort zone that they went so fast right and that he could be in mm-hmm. an, after after a while it's in the back of my head that Annie King thinks that he could step up to a Ryanair shut that, up you tit <laughs> he's, no. not, he's not he's not he's not I, in the Ryanair just 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 you know and I don't know I know Alan King said at the start do, you know I know I know no I know that I know yeah. that it's not that he's not in the Ryanair it's that the fact Mary that he thinks he needs further good yeah and that if he comes up and he's in, out of his comfort zone in a fast run race that he could fall, and that's exactly what happened the last day at Kempton. They were going too fast for him, and that's just my opinion. So that means he's absolutely no chance for me now in the champion chase. So the only horse that I feel that can beat a Nurgamine, for what I've seen, to the naked eye, that's where I judge my horses, <laughs> to the naked eye, and that is your horse that you put up for the in your GG column, the only good horse you put up in your GG column, <laughs> uh, Blue Lord, and I think Blue Lord has a right chance, but Edward Stone has the form from last year's article. Be, but yet then did it there. I don't know why I keep going on because I'm like I'm, I'm going on oh, like you like you going about Hermes Allen and Ergamine will not be beaten. Yeah, and I th- I think that's the crucial part of it. We talked about the fact it was a monster and it was bad ground and that sort of stuff, but he's he's I think he's too good a horse for me to be too worried about ground with him. But I think he's an absolute monster. Like I do think he wins. Daryl, you are much more forgiving than I am, and you've got the beautiful ability to not forget what you said last time is in like pretend it never happened but sort of like I said there with every like we couldn't really get onto him but whereas you're more I don't know maybe more complimentary of him now in hindsight whereas I still don't I still think it was a shit arc he won last year but anyway 
Darrell, what do you make of the race? A shit well, park last year and you're putting up a horse for a race at Chetland. All right, fine. <laughs> well, I, t- I tipped him for the Tingle Creek to win at 5-1. to one. So yeah. he pissed up in that by nine minutes. And they went, I'll tell you now, you saying he's going to get out of his comfort zone. They went hell for leather that day. He might have been a bit flattered by being held up, but they were quite compact that field. And he cleared away from him very easily. I think he's very, very good. I think he's a proper two-mile chaser now, whereas last year I couldn't see him winning the champion chase. Um, I can now. Um, I thought he was over the top at Aintree. Uh, Sandown, I thought, was was fantastic. Yeah, I think he's just a really nice, improving horse. Um, I don't know how much more improvement there's, there is to come, in all honesty, um, but I just love the way he jumps and the way he travels. If it, I mean, this, this will go down to the day for me because the ground's going to be very important in this particular race. If it's um, if it's quick spring ground, then uh, I think an ergamine could be in a little bit of bother. But um, I, well, I say that because editor Deceit is going to go hell for leather. You've got to remember, an ergamine was held up in this race last year. That was the first time they had done that with him all season, right? And I think that they just went, like it was a literal bog, wasn't it, last year? Like you say, it was a monsoon. And he picked up the pieces. Shishkin didn't perform. Um, he's had to beat very little since then, really, in my opinion. Um, I know he won at Punches Town, but um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Shackle Bossoir. And what he beat behind him was was no. They they wouldn't even in place in this in in, in um, Envoy Allen and Captain Guinness. Mm. And uh, he didn't have a lot to beat at Cork, and it was pretty slowly run there. Like, he's a decent horse, but he's going to get knocked off his perch sooner or later, I think. And uh, I think it just could be the right time for Edward Stone um, at the moment. So, but again, I'm going to have to wait and see what happens with the ground because I think top of the uh, spring ground, good to soft ground. I think Edward Stone would absolutely love it. Whereas I think an Ergamine could probably do a bit of rain over this trip. Yeah, and I think that's fair. And again, this is what I mean. Like I can't, I can't have the balance view on Edward Stone like I should have as a person that talks about horse racing. But it is key there as well. And Ergamine, Ner- when he did go and went at Punches Town. Beaten Shackle Bussoir as he did. I know Shackle Bussoir made that mistake the last day against Blue Lord, but maybe Shackle Bussoir obviously didn't didn't finish at Cheltenham either, did he? In that like crappy ground, like maybe that's him. Like he's he, he like he was broken. The same as Shishkin's not the same horse anymore. So maybe that makes Anurga means Punch Time win look less good, and it makes Blue Lord's race look less good. And then all of a sudden, Edward Stone does look probably miles clear. So. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I haven't had a bet in the race yet. Like I said, I do like an argument. I think even money an argument is not bad. But I'm thinking that on the premise that I again from being very very risk averse, but I could have eighty percent of my bank on. Not I wouldn't have the whole bank, but I can say say for, say I was going to do a ton in the race. I could have a, I could have like seventy five quid on an argument, even money to win one fifty. Then I could have twenty five on Edward Stone at say it's eleven to four now, but maybe the three to one is a bit of a stake saver. So it's I either get my money back or I make fifty quid because one of those two wins, as far as I'm concerned. So exciting, I think. Edward Stone probably has got a bit more of a chance than I'm giving him credit for, but the market does already say that. So we'll move on to uh, some more racing. Like the video, subscribe and comment below.